excited too. There are more than 60 shark species that feed off the waters of the Florida Panhandle, but only three of them have the reputation for inflicting serious damage to, even killing humans. The three are great white, tiger, and bull sharks. The great white, for instance, tends to be the largest, measuring up to 20 feet in length, weighing about 2,000 pounds, an animal with such force it can rot it out of the water. The strike of a great white shark lasts a mere second. Slowing it down 40 times reveals the technique and immense strength of this massive predator. It's now becoming clear that great whites migrate thousands of miles across the oceans to harvest seasonal abundances in different seas. Some shark species are known to range over huge distances. Blue sharks, for example, travel thousands of miles. Females have been recorded crossing the Atlantic to give birth to their young. By tagging and recapturing sharks, we can learn where they go, find out how long they live, and keep track of their reproduction and health. Taking hold of her, the new contender positions himself for penetration. The female is barely moving, almost motionless. She's generating no forward momentum and taking in very little oxygen. The male keeps at her, even the presence of Young, who has moved closer for a better look, doesn't distract him. In a sudden, violent movement, he attaches himself to the female and penetrates her. The coupling has begun. Young is about to film an extraordinary scene. The act itself looks extremely violent to our eyes. However, this copulation method has proven itself over thousands of years. It's a way of selecting both the most powerful males and the strongest females. It is one of the keys to the shark's survival. The physiology of female sharks reflects this rigorous selection process. To allow them to sustain the bites they receive, the skin of the female is twice as thick as that of the males. The wounds on the female's body are fairly shallow and help trigger ovulation. Male sharks have two copulatory organs, but only use one at a time. These organs are not erectile penises, but appendages formed from the inner edge of the pelvic fins. The coupling has been underway for five minutes. Both sharks are hardly moving and finding it increasingly difficult to breathe. With a sudden shudder, the male frees the female from his grip and swims off. So my question is which color will most attract a great white shark? Black, red, or yellow? The results are in. When we put the black mannequin in the water, we didn't even see the sharks. They didn't come anywhere near. When we put the red mannequin in the water, they showed mild interest. They swam around. They were checking it out. But as soon as we dropped the yellow mannequin in the water, they showed aggression. They came up to the cage. They had open mouths. They bumped the cage. Does this prove that wearing a particular color is either going to keep you alive or get you killed? We don't know for sure. A lot more tests need to be done. But I know that for myself, when I go diving, I'm wearing black, not yellow. 
one of the most amazing things about these bull sharks is that they go from marine to fresh water with no problems. Bulls have been found thousands of miles upstream in both the Mississippi and Amazon rivers. They also are believed to hunt in the same shallow coastal waters where unsuspecting beachgoers frolic in the summer. Many shark attacks, according to Ritter, are accidents resulting from a shark's curiosity about humans in the water. Though sharks are usually cautious and will avoid human activity, splashing sounds may fuel the shark's curiosity. Many of these accidents, I believe, just happen because the shark does not know what what's going on and he, he bites out of curiosity. The shark sinks its teeth into Eric's calf. This was the most excruciating pain I ever felt in my life. So I stood up and lifted the affected leg as high as I could and she has to open her mouth. But it tears off the muscle and opens an artery. I tried to understand what just happened. Did I misjudge the sharks? Could I have been wrong all these years? Could there be really a shark that actually wanted to harm me? And I just couldn't believe it. My accident could have been avoided um, had we spoken to the locals before we went in the water. They would have said, this isn't a safe place to swim. If you dive in a place that's well known for sharks, it's not the shark's fault that you get attacked. It's the risk that you took going into their environment and putting yourself in danger. <laughs> 